So what is going on guys, I'm Gabriel Aguiar, currently working on Rabbit's Tail, links below for more. And today we are going to see how to create a character's trail. Very commonly used in many games to convey the feeling of speed or a very quick movement done by the character and it's a pretty cool technique and not that hard. So without further ado let's jump right into this and if you want to get your hands on this project it's all available on my Patreon's page and many others as well, links below. And in my scene I have a mix ammo character and attach it to it. I have a character controller and a movement input so I can move around and then I have a Cinemachine free look camera so I can look around as well. And attached to this character, I have a mesh trail script where most of the effect is going to happen. And we are going to create one from scratch so you can see how it works and tweak it to your own needs. So with right click, let's create a C sharp script we can already assign to our character. And double click to open it up. And in my case, I want to use this effect by pressing the spacebar key. So in the update function, I'm gonna say if input dot get key down, open brackets key code dot space. If I press the space bar, I'm gonna call a coroutine. I'm gonna start the coroutine called the activate trail, which is going to have a certain amount of time to be active. This active time variable is going to be a public float of two seconds. We can already go ahead and create a private boolean to know if the trail is active. And while we are checking if we are pressing the spacebar button, we can already check if the trail is not active. If it isn't, then it has become active and then we call this coroutine, which is going to be an I enumerator, activate trail. And it's going to receive a float called time active. And basically while time active bigger than zero, well, we are going to remove a mesh refresh rate variable, which is going to be a public float of 0 0.1. You can create an header up here so you can keep this organized and call it mesh related. And then for the I enumerator, we can say yield return new wait for seconds, the same refresh rate. And after the active time has come to a zero, we can say the trail is no longer active. So basically everything is going to happen right here. And if you go and look to our character, we can see that it has a skinned mesh renderer component. So we are dealing with skinned mesh renderer objects, basically animated objects. We are going to need to know how many skinned mesh renders our character has. So let's create a private variable for that. It's an array. And then down here we can check if it is null first and then we can say that skin and mesh renders is going to be equal to get components in children and the component we are looking for is skin and mesh renderer and now we can iterate through each skin and mesh and for each one we are going to create a new game object And we are going to add two components. One is a mesh renderer. And the other is a mesh filter. So let's save this and let's test this out to see what's happening here. It's going to be active for two seconds and the mesh refresh rate is at 0 0.1. And if I walk around and press spacebar, as you can see, for two seconds, it has created the new game object. These game objects have a mesh render and a mesh filter. The mesh filter is to assign the mesh and the mesh render is to assign a material. So basically we need to assign the mesh and a material. 
Well, let's first cache these two components, the mesh render and the mesh filter. For the mesh, we actually have a very easy function that we can use in the skin and mesh render. We can say mef.mesh equals mesh, and this mesh is going to be a new mesh that we are going to bake from the skin and mesh renderers. We have this bake function that basically takes a snapshot of the mesh at this exact moment. We are recording where each vertex is, basically. If we save this and test this out, as you can see, if I move around and press spacebar, it is creating an object. It has the purple material, which means it has no material. So that's basically the only thing we are missing here at this point. But in case you haven't noticed, the mesh isn't following our character. So let's fix that first. Up here, after we create the game object, we can say dot transform dot set position and rotation. We are going to need a public transform for the position to spawn. We can use this information to place the new mesh at the right position with the right rotation. If we save this now in the inspector, the position to spawn is, in my case, the character. I'm going to assign to the position to spawn, and if I press play, as you can see, and move around, we have this purple character following us around. Great, so at this point, all we gotta do is assign a material and we are pretty much done with our script. So I'm going to say mr, which is the mesh render, dot material equals mat. And this mat is a public material. We can actually create a new header for the shader related variables. Oh, and if you look closely, we have a bunch of objects that never get destroyed. So let's take care of that by saying destroy this game object after a mesh destroy delay variable. This variable is going to be a float up here with a default value of 3 seconds. So let's save this and to test this out we can actually assign any material that you have around. Now if you press play, move around and press space bar, as you can see, we are leaving indeed a mesh trail, basically, from this character. And it's pretty cool to see this in action. The bake mesh function is it's creating a snapshot of how the mesh is at that exact moment, leaving this nice trail behind. So, at this point now we can create a shader. We are going to create something very simple, so you can have something to work with. So with right click, we can create a shader graph. You can create a blank shader graph or an unlit shader graph. I'm going to call it Glow Tutorial. Double click to open it up. And well, in the graph inspector, you want to say that the target is universal because that's the render pipeline I'm using. Unlit, we can turn on allow material override so we can control all of this in the inspector. We are going to need a Fresnel effect, a color property, we can multiply them together and connect it to the base color. Oh, and then we can split this. So we can fade this out with the alpha with transparency. Let's convert this color to a property. Say it's in HDR mode and that the color is white with alpha at 100 and then create a float for the Fresnel power with a default value of 2 and connect it right here so you can have control over the Fresnel and lastly a float for the alpha which is going to have a default value of 1 and it's going to be a slider between 0 and 1. We have split this so we can multiply this alpha right here with the property we just created. And if we connect this to the alpha input of the fragment function and then save it, we are going to be able to, well, fade the mesh out thanks to the alpha. Let's create a material out of this shader. Right click. 
Now it's the moment where you can select any color you want, play with the intensity as well, and with the Fresnel power. As you can see, the alpha controls the transparency, and then we can assign this material to our script. And if we press play, now all of these meshes have the material we just created. Awesome, really cool. There is just one thing that we need to do, which is, well, animate the alpha value so we can see the meshes being faded out. So, to slowly fade this out, to animate a shader property via script, it's actually very simple. After assigning the material and before destroying the object, we want to start a coroutine, call it Animate Material Float. And down here we can create an I enumerator for this animate material float. It's going to receive a material, a float goal, a rate, and a refresh rate. And we want the material so we can access the float we are trying to animate. We can say mat.getFloat and we need the name, the reference of the float. So let's create a property called the shader variable reference, which is going to be a public string up here. And then we can say while value to animate is bigger than the goal, because in this case we are going to go from 1 to 0, well then we are going to remove a little bit, we are going to remove the rate to that value, and then assign that to the material by using a set float open brackets we are going to pass the name of the variable we are trying to modify and then the value to animate and lastly we can use a yield return new wait for seconds and that's when the refresh rate comes in up here we are going to pass the material mesh render dot material the goal is going to be zero so it fades out the mesh completely then we are going to create a public float for the shader variable rate and another one for the shader variable refresh rate with a default value of 0 0.05 and for the rate 0 0.1 we can assign them down here and that's it, if we save this now and go back to Unity in this inspector, all we gotta do now is say the name of the viral we are trying to modify. If we open the shader, which is underscore alpha, if we open the shader, we can make sure by selecting this property that the reference is named underscore alpha. That is extremely important, otherwise the script cannot control this variable of the shader. Once you made sure that the name is correct, you can press play and now if you press spacebar, we get an awesome mesh trail that we are leaving behind. You can play with the mesh refresh rate, decreased to 0.05, so it spawns even more meshes at an even bigger rate, as you can see. And it's so cool, off a mesh behind. And the shader we created for this is very basic and simple, but at least now you know how to apply a trail to your character. You can obviously improve the shader to your own needs. I think it's a good starting point. So that's it for this tutorial, I hope you have enjoyed this video. This project and many others are available on my Patreon's page, in case you are interested there's a link below. I want to say thank you to each patron by supporting me last month and a special quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons which are 3D Sorcery, Austin Schneider, Aviato Bali, Cloudy, Krubi Dubidu, Diego Marques, Duke Williams, Duitran, Edward Chai, Gilles Walter, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, Casey Miller, Canon Anselm, Maxim, Mark Anum, Matheus Bragança, Mo Graf Tech, Nat Sims, Nyang Yun, Oitsk, Pradeep Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Chaun G, T. Megal Brown, Vel Verisuta, Will Hughes, and Will Poilion. Thank you so much for your support, you guys are amazing. You guys rock, I hope you have enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.